Hi folks, good evening. I'm your professor, Mike Walsh, and tonight I have a special treat for you. Um, in my never-ending quest to find interesting content or applications for my students, I've come across uh, an application called uh, Depth of Field Simulator. Now, what that is, if I can clear away some of my workspace here, what that is is a very interesting depth of field calculator that uh, you can access at dofsimulator.net and our friends over at Depth of Field Simulator have given us this terrific software where you can play with and experiment and uh, review the characteristics of lenses, uh, subject distances, bokeh, and depth of field characteristics for a variety of settings on your camera. Now this simulator will work for photographic cameras or video cameras and uh, you have to tell, basically tell the software what camera platform you're working with and whether or not you're working in a portrait or landscape uh, horizontal or vertical format. So you've got a number of adjustments you can make here. We've got the interface, we have basic uh, or advanced. We're going to pick basic and then we have metric or imperial units. Since we're in the United States, we'll choose imperial units. Um, and then you can choose your model and the model's appearance. You got all these terrific pull down menus here. So we got a couple of different guys, one at 6'3, one at 5'11, a couple of young women, one at 5'7, and one at 5'3. Uh, you have a couple of girls and a couple of boys uh, in uh, elementary and intermediate sizes. And uh, so I've got it set on a woman at 5'7. And then you can select your backgrounds. You got mountains, you got a cathedral, church, city. Uh, specific city Paris you've got a tree in the background a building in the background or a park and if you select the different uh, backgrounds you'll see it's loading and it will give us uh, the parks not too bad I like them I usually pick the mountain as my default but we'll go with the park today uh, for our demonstration um, okay so and then we choose portrait or landscape now since uh, this is lighting for cinematography um, and cinematography too specifically tonight. Um, let's go with a landscape aspect ratio since that's what our motion picture aspect ratio is. Um, and over here we can tell it what camera. Now I've already dialed in the Sony uh, FS7. Uh, this simulator came out uh, just before the uh, FS5 came out, so there's no FS5 in the pull-down menu. As you can see, there's a uh, there's a variety of still cameras. You can pick the uh, Alpha Series DSLRs. Uh, of course, those are full-frame uh, cameras. Um, you got the A63 and A6500 um, uh, mirrorless cameras. Um, what else have we got in here? A bunch of still cameras. Next series of uh, still cameras, cyber shots, all the way at the bottom, Sony puts their uh, video cameras. And uh, the models we have to choose from are the F23, F35, and F65. Those are professional Sony studio cameras. Uh, the F950, the P1, the F900R. F900R is also a professional studio camera. Um, these are all prosumer. Here's the FS700. Some of you may have that camera model from earlier in the curriculum uh, before the FS5 came out. Uh, also the EX1 and 3, and then of course the F3, F5, F55 Pro camera. And then here's the FS7, which is kind of the big brother of the FS5. So I, I picked that. I thought it would be uh, good enough for the demonstration. It does show us our crop factor of 1.6x. So 1.6 times the focal length will give you the uh, uh, approximate focal new focal length of the camera based on your your sensor size. So now over here, 
we can change our lens. I've got it set at 50 millimeter right now and I have it set at 2.8. Um, if you had some NDs uh, over the camera on this bright sunny day in the park, uh, you could probably achieve a 2.8 uh, on a 50 millimeter. Um, you don't have to set your um, shutter speeds or anything because we've selected a, a, a video camera uh, as our as our test camera. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to tell the simulator how far away our model is. So. <clears throat> The factors that are going to affect your depth of field are going to be your focal length. That's one factor. Uh, depth of field is greater with wide-angle lenses than with telephoto lenses, um, given the same distances and exposures. Um, distance to your subject is also uh, a factor in your depth of field calculation and your actual F or T stop that you select on the lens. So all three of these major sliders right here are what are going to determine uh, how sharp or out of focus your background is. And that's usually something that we, we try to predict or try to dial into our uh, workflow so that we can achieve results like really cool out of focus uh, backgrounds, nice bokeh we call it. Um, to differentiate the foreground from the background, create a little 3D uh, sense, and to create a focal point, which is our subject in the foreground, uh, in lieu of anything in the background that might be a distraction. So watch what happens. Uh, obviously, we know what happens when the, the f-stop closes down. Let's close it down to like a 16. And you can see that at a very small f-stop, uh, at a very small aperture size, or or uh, aperture diameter uh, and a large f-stop number, as you can see here, the background is really sharp. And, um, you know, that's okay for, you know, snaps and maybe for, you know, knocking around, taking silly videos on vacation or with your friends when you're out hawking around. But uh, if you're shooting professionally, this is usually a distraction. Um, and we try to avoid a background that's uh, in co competition with the foreground by throwing it out of focus a little bit. So we would throw some NDs in the camera to knock the uh, light uh, levels down coming into the lens. And then we could choose a wider uh, aperture uh, diaphragm uh, and a lower F number. And anywhere 2 to a 4 is usually a major feature uh, shooting stop. You can see at a 4, it starts to come into sharpness a little. At a 2.8, it's a little further blown out. We could probably achieve a 4 outside with NDs on a, on a sunny day like this. Uh, if we went from a 50 to, say, gosh, I don't know, uh, say a 90, a portrait lens. Okay, now you can see the background get out of focus even more. And, of course, the aperture has closed down. Um, your viewing aperture, I should say, not your lens aperture. Um, in other words, the field of view is narrower in the background than it is in the, than uh, it was on the 50. See how much more information we see in the background on the 50? That's because our viewing angle or viewing aperture is wider on a 50 millimeter lens. So uh, let's keep that at the 50 for a sec and jump down here and show you what happens uh, when we change the distance uh, our subject is from the camera. And if you scroll down here on this, whoops, come on back over here. If you scroll down uh, to the bottom of the page on this, you've got a little distance scale here, which is in feet. And you've got an icon of your photographer and an icon of your talent. And we can either change the distance here on our chart, or we can move our subject this way physically. And this little shaded area right here is representative of the actual zone of focus that you'll have at a four on a 50 millimeter lens at eight feet away. But if we keep the exposure the same, the lens the same, and just move the subject to say 10 feet, notice that our zone of focus has increased almost twice as wide. Watch, I'll go back to eight feet. There's eight feet, right? And you can see how the zone of focus is just about as wide as her head which means that if you focused on her nose, you'd get the chin and the ears in focus, which is kind of ideal. Um, but if she's going to move around a little bit in that frame, even if she's going to just sort of dance around from one leg to the other, you might want a little more depth of focus than that. You might want to push her out to 10 feet. And then you have basically shoulder to shoulder in focus, meaning her entire head is in focus. 
and parts of her, let's say her the top of her blazer here would be also in sharp focus, or uh, maybe if she had, uh, say, a necklace on her neck, that would certainly be in focus, or maybe a uh, some kind of insignia on her on her jersey here might also be in focus with this much depth of, depth of field. And of course, the greater the distance from the camera, even if the f-stop and focal length stay the same, you see how the zone of focus around our subject is now growing considerably the further away she gets. So on a long shot at a four, uh, the background is going to start to inherently become in, uh, closer into focus um, because the depth of field is increasing uh, and the viewing angle is increasing because we're moving her further away. So what we might do at 20 feet, if we want to go back to the same amount of depth of field, but we don't want her this close to camera for some reason, let's say there's something in here that would impair her ability to be standing eight feet from the camera. Uh, we might want to then dial in some more ND on the camera so we can go to a 2.8. And then we might increase our focal length to that 90 millimeter we looked at before. Now we're getting pretty close to maybe 100 or Let's put in 100 mil. Yeah, 100 mil is going to be closer to what we had before when she was only 8 feet away. The framing is now similar. And uh, we have uh, interesting bokeh back here. But on a 100 millimeter lens, the viewing angle or the viewing aperture is even narrower than the 50. So we're now increasing um, the magnification of the background, but it's getting thrown further out of focus. Uh, with respect to the proximity of the subject to the camera, and we we restore some of that nice looking bokeh. All right, this is called lens compression, uh, and we study that uh, in uh, cinematography two in uh, week uh, one, I believe, uh, and we also study it in cinematography one uh, in week three. So. This is a concept that you should be familiar with. If not, revisit it again by using the depth of field simulator. Um, that's what makes this kind of a neat tool because it gives you a sense of what different lenses are doing at what focal lengths and what subject distances and you can sort of see the effects uh, even though you may not have the ability to go out and uh, experience these, uh, these effects with your equipment. Let's say it's a rainy day or Let's say you're on vacation uh, and you don't have your gear with you, uh, but you're sitting in the hotel room and you're bored and you got nothing to do and you want to just sort of play around. Uh, you can go to this uh, simulator on the web and play around a little bit and just tell it what camera you want to use. Uh, here's an interesting thing, too. If you have a Sony uh, FS7, but you want to know what images would look like uh, if you wanted to shoot, let's say... Um, Let's say you got a shoot coming up and they want to use the uh, Sony uh, A7S II because it has that radical uh, super high ISO which can give you those amazing night shots. So you could dial in the A7S II and then all of a sudden with a full frame uh, camera and full frame capture device, you see your crop factor now is almost perfect one to one, right? And all of a sudden that 90 millimeter <laughs> looks like a wide angle, doesn't it? Because the larger your capture device, um, the more magnification you'll need to uh, create the telephoto effect um, than you do with a Super 35 sensor, which is around the size of an APS-C style sensor, more or less, uh, smaller than a full-frame sensor. Um, and the same 50 millimeter or 90 millimeter um, looks like a, a super telephoto. So this viewing angle or viewing aperture and the relative size of your subject over uh, similar distances varies depending on the size of your capture device. And this is a great way to experiment with that. Um, I'm going to go back to our video camera for a minute so I can finish up here about the app itself. Um, I just really like playing around with these apps. Um, I've reviewed a couple of them now. I've reviewed the um, uh, Hollywood Camera Work and Shot Designer. 
uh, and the virtual lighting studio, uh, another one that I like a lot. Um, these are fun tools to play around with, uh, on, like I said, on a rainy day or, um, gosh, a few years back I spent a number of weeks laid up with uh, surgeries and um, casts and, and things on my, on my leg and I couldn't get out of bed. And uh, this would have been a great thing to play with uh, had it been around at that time. Uh, just to keep my mind active and uh, keep me thinking about my craft and allowing me to practice my skills without having to, without the ability to get out of bed. So uh, there's there's definitely a value for a tool like this. Um, so I think let's see, we've got some other some other features. You can lock some of these uh, variables so that they don't change. You can also save some of your settings. Uh, for instance, uh, I saved the 50 millimeter 2.8 at 8 feet. If we wanted to look at that, that was what I saved uh, when I was playing around before. Um, and uh, I, if I want to go back to what I had, I guess I have to uh, dial it back in. But here's our uh, 100 millimeter at uh, 20, I think we were at 20 feet. And then we went to a 2.8. So... Um, and now, if I wanted to store that, all I would want, all I would have to do is uh, add that to my uh, to my queue. Boom, and there it is. Okay, so you can store a lot of different shots. I think I had one dialed in here, uh, full frame, 35 millimeter, like Canon, for instance, an 85 at a 1.4 at just under 10 feet. Looks like that. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, here's just a straight up APS-C. 55 millimeter lens at a 1.4, so that's like a Canon 7D or a Canon 70D, 80D, uh, or like I said, APS-C is very close in size to Super 35, so it's similar to say uh, Blackmagic Studio Camera or uh, uh, or your Sony FS5, really. So there's 55 mils at 1.4 at a distance of just under 10 feet. And again, here's your depth of focus sort of graph here or chart. Gives you a really good idea how much depth of field you got. See how at a 1.4, she got about half of her head in, in focus. So that means you better focus on the bridge of the nose because the chin will be out of focus and you may or may not get the ear. Um, but you'll definitely get the eyes if you focus on the nose. So that's uh, that's giving you a pretty good idea of how little depth of field you have at a 1.4, even on a 50 millimeter lens. If you want to increase that depth of field to give your focus puller a little help, you might push your subject out to 12 feet, uh, and then you get a little bit more. But gosh, in order to get her whole head in focus, if you use this chart, you'll see you got to push her out at about 18 feet. Now you've changed the whole dynamic of your frame. Uh, you're now at a, you know, almost a, you know, it's pretty near a full body right here. This is a, definitely a long shot. So uh, if what you wanted was a cowboy or a medium, then uh, you can't push her that far out just to help your focus puller. But what you could do is keep her at 10 feet and then come off that 1.4, come off that 1.4 to a 2.8, pull some of the ND out. Now you've got quite a bit of depth of field again, not as much bokeh. But sometimes life's a trade-off. You know, if you really need to make sure your subjects are focused, if they're moving a lot, um, then you're knowing that you can't really shoot them at a 1-4 or you risk uh, having your subject out of focus. So it's a really good tool to learn by. I like it. Uh, it's free. You can just go on. Uh, DOFsimulator.net, all one word. And uh, play around. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. I, I know I do. And um, that's it. That's all I've got for you this evening. So uh, have a good time with this. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send me an email, call my office phone, or join me on my weekly go-to training sessions, and I'll be happy to address your questions, your problems, or take a look at your work and give you some critique. All right, folks, have a good evening. Enjoy yourselves. Keep at it. Keep up the good work. And I'll talk to you again soon on your discussion post. Thanks.